Hola, mi gente, and welcome to Cuéntame con Sonia Camacho. This short-form podcast features the stories of Latinos from our community, from engineers, business owners, students, and so much more. Each episode will give you a quick boost of motivation and encouragement before starting your day. I'm your host, Sonia Camacho. Thank you for being here. Now let's get into today's episode. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on the very first guest episode of Cuéntame con Sonia Camacho. Today, we have an amazing guest to kick off the series. Her name is Katia Echazareta. You may know her as the very first Mexican-born woman to go to space. She's also a content creator on Instagram and TikTok to share her experiences as a Latina in the electrical engineering field, as well as all things space. Katia, thank you so much for being here, and I cannot wait to share some of your stories with our listeners today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah. So like other people, I'm sure um, we've all seen a lot of your interviews and talking about your journey into space. But today I really want to dive deeper into some more personal um, topics. So I would love to touch on machismo and what that's like growing up in a Mexican household. Um, because I know a lot of the listeners could probably relate to that as well as myself. So I think I want to just start off by kind of um, defining what machismo is. So machismo is kind of a sense of being manly and self-reliant, often known as well as like toxic masculinity, um, just being overly strong and having this masculine self-pride, um, just over-exaggerated masculinity. So um, from there, I guess that we can go into if you have ever encountered that within your own family, you know, while you had this dream of space, if you ever encountered any machismo along the way. Yeah, that's a very interesting topic for me to talk about because when you're a child, you don't really understand your surroundings. You don't really understand what's going on. You kind of look at everything as normal, right? I remember growing up and, and being in high school and thinking like, oh, I have such an amazing family. They're so supportive. It's it's so great. And then you kind of start to find out around that age how other families are, and particularly how other non-Hispanic families behave towards their children. And that's when you kind of start to think, well, all of these different things that I thought were okay, that I thought were normal, that I thought made me a normal member of a family, or you're telling me they're not, you're telling me they're not okay, you're telling me that was actually inappropriate, you're telling me that was actually abusive. So I think that's one of the hardest things that I've had to do is, is look back at my past and realize how many things were not okay. And one of the biggest ones was particularly that. I didn't really understand it at the time that that's what I was dealing with. But I've realized now that at the core of pretty much all of the negative things I've faced in my career in STEM and in wanting to be in STEM have been the root has been machismo and, and sexism. I remember growing up and wanting to play with toys, right? Just a very specific type of toy. I wanted to build things. I wanted to play with Legos. I wanted to play with my brother's little race cars. And I wanted it to create bridges and, and build things with what he had. And that was so interesting to me to have to go through through those moments of I want to play with that but I shouldn't it's not mine it's not made for me and I'm actually being scolded when I touch it why you know so th that I think was when I started to kind of realize that we were treated differently girls and, and boys but again, you're young and you kind of accept it. And I think that's one of the saddest things that we grow up and we grow up to accept that that's just the way things are. I think one of the most difficult things for me was actually wanting to major in engineering. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, I remember that my dad was always super, super supportive of an education. Like he insisted that we get an education. We had to all of us, all of my siblings, it was a priority for us to dedicate ourselves to school. And so that's the interesting thing where I'm dedicating myself to my studies. I'm being encouraged by my dad and he's tutoring me and he wants me to be good at science, wants me to be good at math. He's kind of pushing me into that road as a child. But then I grow up and I'm now kind of 
a little bit older, now high school age, about to choose a career, and now he's pushing back. Now he's saying, no, I don't think you actually really like that. No, I don't think that's the road you should go down. No, you know what? I don't really see an interest in you, even though it's been cultivated in me since I was born, basically, because of that interest, that natural interest that they saw in me. So that was really weird to understand that he experienced in his mind a shift of this is no longer a child that you can look at innocently. This is now a young woman that you have to think about the reality of what that means for her in this space. And that shift that he went through and that pushback I was receiving was really confusing for me. Yeah. So I feel like I've noticed this with some men, not all men, but some of them, when a woman is doing really well for herself or becoming in a position of power, you're almost like a threat to them now. And this is where their attitude starts to shift, or maybe there's a lack of support now. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your father and your family experiences, and also some words of encouragement that you were able to tell yourself whenever going through these kinds of experiences. For me, that time period was really difficult because I can very clearly see why so many different young girls decide not to pursue it even though they're interested in it. Because when I get messages from young girls, high school age, wanting to major in some sort of STEM field, it's rarely, oh, I'm scared that it's going to be too difficult for me. I'm scared I won't succeed. And rather it's, I'm scared of the treatment. I'm scared of how they're gonna see me, perceive me, and, and whether they're even gonna want me around. That's actually the majority of the fears that I get from young girls. And I was no different. I was definitely in that position too, because I understood my dad and my grandpa, um, both of them are engineers. And so, like you said, I think it was, and I've realized it now, it was a mix. It was a mix of he's in the workplace and he's seeing the way women are being treated. And also I think he's realizing that I have a lot more opportunities and, and I'm probably going to be able to go a lot further than he was in, in the same career. So it, it was kind of like a weird mix of, I don't know, like maybe feeling insecure, but also understanding what I'm going to have to face. And I remember one conversation I had with him where he said, no, you don't want to do that because I know the way they talk about the women in the workplace. I know the way they look at them. I know the way that they that, that the men react to them. They're not respected. They're not looked as serious engineers and, you know, all these different excuses. And I remember in my head just thinking, oh, my gosh, you are straight up telling me that you know what's happening. So many women have been shouting from the rooftops that sexism is real, that toxic workplaces are real, that inappropriate behaviors are real, and you're telling me to my face that you know they are, that all of you know that they are, and instead of actually protecting that woman you're telling me about, you're trying to convince me not to go in there. And that's really when I started to understand that this is much deeper than I thought. This is no longer oh, they don't, they just don't notice what they're doing and, and blah, blah, blah. It's a systemic thing that they understand and are refusing to change. And it goes as far as your own daughter. And, and that's really one of the most difficult things to try to understand and still decide, you know what, I'm not going to let you win. That's super important. And now with all of your success and everything, how has your father been reacting to that? Has any has there been any shift back to the more supportive side? Or I think you briefly touched on it at the Shep National Convention, kind of his attitude towards um, everything that you've been able to accomplish. That's been one of the weirdest things to have to live through in the aftermath is the reactions from the men in my family in general. And they've been positive in some way and yet you can kind of feel the way it stings you can feel the way i'm still their family right i'm still their daughter i'm still their granddaughter i'm still their niece and in some way they're proud of that and they're proud of what i've done but at the same time i definitely can see and feel 
that insecurity creep up in in some of the comments um for example my grandpa had some health issues a couple months ago and a lot of the male members of the family basically started saying that it was my fault that it was because of all of the stress of the launch and the stress he had to go through um during those weeks leading up to it and that that's what caused him to have health issues and it it just goes back to the same thing right they're they're refusing to allow the woman to be the one that is basically the most successful one yeah. in in the family. Oh, that is awful to hear, but I'm glad that you are very self-aware of, you know, what's going on and what the true meaning behind all of this is. But we are short on time, so I think I would love for you to leave us and the listeners with some advice for the other young girls and women out there um, who may be in this space of dealing with machismo or have been grown up in a machista household and just some final words of encouragement that really helped you get to where you are today that you think would benefit others. I think the most important thing that has really helped me throughout all of this, because you have to be really strong, especially as a Latina, you have to be so strong to be able to do some of these things. And not, again, not because the topics themselves are hard, which they are, but because on top of that, you have to deal with all of this, all of these different external factors that are coming together to make it so much harder and still you're expected to excel and be better than, than most of the people around you to be seen as half, half as credible and half as serious. So what has really helped me through all of this is to always understand very clearly two things. One, who I am and two, what I want. So who I am. That's important because there are so many people close to you, maybe not close to you, maybe random people online, maybe your coworkers, maybe your classmates, whoever. But so many people throughout your life are going to have opinions about you. And a lot of the times they're not going to be necessarily positive. And so you're going to hear things all of the time that are going to bother you. You're an affirmative action hire. You're only here to better the diversity numbers. You're just an intern. You're never going to be able to be a lead of any sort because you're not supposed to be here. You're going to hear that so much and it's not going to stop. It's just going to climb up, right? Now you're in a leadership position. Oh, well, who did you have to sleep with to get that? So you have to understand who you are. Do you know that that's not true? Do you recognize that you're here because of your hard work, because you deserved it, because of your worth? As long as you know that, then those words don't have to matter. And it's also really important, again, to know what you want. Because you're going to be hearing all of these different things. It's going to be like a hurricane going on around you sometimes of all of these different opinions and all of these people who think that you shouldn't be here But do you want to be there? Do you want to get there? Are you the one that wants this particular thing? And if so, those two things coupled together are exactly what's going to allow you to move yourself in this journey upwards until you're able to finally achieve it. And then the really funny thing happens once you finally do is those exact voices that were doubting you all along are the exact voices telling you, I always knew you would do it. I always believed in you. I always knew you could without a doubt. Oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing such amazing advice. And thank you for sharing your personal stories with us. Like I said, I know a lot of the listeners are going to be able to relate to this and just feel so inspired. So thank you again, Katya. I will have all of her socials linked on this episode. And again, thank you so much. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you so much. Follow the podcast on all social platforms at Cuéntame con Sonia Camacho. Listen to us on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. Want to be featured in a future episode? Email cuéntame.sonia at gmail.com. Thank you to our equipment sponsor, Sure. 